Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, who here knows all about pattern recognition? Who's an expert at pattern recognition? Okay, I'll see how good you are. I'm going to show you two skin lesions. One is suspicious and one is innocent. And I want to see how long it takes you to work out which is which. Are you ready? <laughs> really quick. <laughs> okay, so pattern recognition is innate behaviour, not just humans, but mammals, birds, bats, all sorts of things. But pattern analysis is describing the patterns in a reproducible and a teachable manner. Now, you look at those and you know what they are instantly. Top three and the first two on the bottom. You know instantly because they are symmetrical and our brains recognise symmetrical patterns. That's how they're made to do, to do that. And so we recognise symmetrical things as we recognise our mother's face. Now the one on the bottom right, okay, you know it's a lion, but it wasn't so recognisable instantly because it's chaotic. It's not symmetrical. And that's the important principle. Now, here we have the five things you will see every single day which you should recognise just like you recognise those animal faces in the previous picture. Nevis, top A is Nevis. B, Seb K, or Sol Lentigo. C, Hemangioma. D, Dermatofibroma. And E, what's E? Sebaceous gland hyperplasia. Okay? <laughs> now, <coughs> you will recognise that and you will know that by this time next week because you will have looked at a thousand of them with your dermatoscope. You will, won't you? That's what you need to do. When you've looked at a thousand, you'll know them. And you can look at a thousand easily next week on normal people, because normal people have all those five things. You don't need to put those five things through a system. You don't need to put them through an algorithm. You recognise them like you recognise your mother's face. And that's 99.9% .9 of the things you look at on the skin, you will look at for a millisecond and move on, because you will recognise them. The one on the bottom right, you won't recognise it because it's not symmetrical. Now, when you've had experience, you recognise it as a melanoma but you will not recognise it as a known benign lesion. It has chaos. It also has chaos of border abruptness. See how the border is abrupt here and gradual around here. You know? And it's got clues which you'll learn all about. But the main thing is you can't recognise it. And if you can't recognise it, you must assess it as a suspicious lesion and they're the ones you stop and pause over. Now, what is it? <laughs> pattern recognition, okay? That's pattern. Now you've recognised a melanoma by pattern recognition. It's not one of the five benign things, but because you're so good, you've recognised a melanoma by pattern recognition instantly. What's that? A BCC. It's not one of those five benign things, right? And you know it's a BCC by pattern recognition. And the more experience you get, the more things you'll recognise by pattern recognition, even abnormal things. And so it doesn't get hard once you've looked at thousands and thousands and thousands of things. How long does it take to become an expert in anything? Music. Art. 1,000 hours. Right? Read the book, blink. One, sorry, no, no, 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. Now, if you use your dermatoscope for about an hour every day, that's about 20 years, okay? So people who use the dermatoscope all day every day, like, like melanographers, like nurse practitioners, they become experts quicker than GPs do, right? And at UQ we train melanographers now. A nurse can do the, the graduate certificate. So this is worth thinking about, right? If you want to cut stuff out and you want an expert to diagnose stuff for you, think about getting a nurse trained up as a melanographer. Pattern recognition. What's that? Seb K. Everyone happy with Seb K? Okay. Pattern recognition. What's that? It's not. It's not a melanoma. Now, what you thought was a melanoma because it's got radial streaming. Because radial streaming goes with the word melanoma, right? You made your diagnosis before you made your description. That's what metaphorical terminology does, right? That's why we don't use it. If you call it, if you think it's a BCC, you'll call that leaf-like areas, right? It's not a BCC. If you call it lines radial segmental, you leave all your options open for the three things that have that 
particular feature, which are melanoma, BCC, and SCC in situ. And that's an SCC in situ. So for that one, you need a pattern analysis because you didn't recognize it. If you did, you misrecognized it. Okay? So that's why you need to be careful about pattern recognition of things that are not one of those five common benign things. Until you become an expert, you need to be very, very careful. If you would cut it out, it's okay. If, if you put it through chaos and clues, and it's chaotic, it's got lines of radio signal, you cut it out, then the pathologist will correct your mistake and it won't matter, it'll actually be quite exciting because you will have got something wrong and you will have cut it out anyway. But be very, very careful about assuming something from pattern recognition until you become an expert. So we have two methods, one for pigmented lesions, chaos and clues, it's either chaotic and then if it's chaotic, we look for one of nine clues. Or it's non-pigmented, we look for ulceration, white clues and non-benign vessel patterns. Simple as that, real easy. So we put this one through pattern analysis, pigmented, it's chaotic, it was that size different to that side, and it's got lines, um, radial, segmental, there. And we cut it out and the pathologist tells us what it is. So you've seen this one this morning, you look at it, you don't recognise it as one of those five benign things, okay, because it's, it's not, none of these things here fit the pattern, and you put it through a method, and whether you get it right or not doesn't matter, you're going to cut it out, and this morning we showed this is not a very good picture, but there's dot vessels there, linear vessels down here, and it's a, an invasive melanoma. Okay, uh, now this is an interesting case. Is it one of those five benign things? No, it's not. It doesn't fit the pattern. So we pull through pattern analysis, and we only use the pigmented method. Chaotic, clues to malignancy. Okay, well in this particular case, it's got a pattern of clods here. Yeah, that's a cobblestone pattern, so that's a congenital nevus, isn't it? Like if you look at that and say cobblestone pattern, huh? congenital nevus. But we don't do that, we describe it. We say, okay, it's a pigmented lesion, it's chaotic. We can't recognise it as one of the five benign things, and it's got an eccentric structureless area. This has got a pattern of clods, this hasn't got any particular structure predominating, it's structureless. What is it? It's a melanoma in situ arising in the congenital nevus. Most melanomas associated with a nevus are associated not with a dysplastic nevus but with a congenital nevus. How about that? Most, it's published, most melanomas arising with a nevus are associated with a common nevus, not a dysplastic nevus. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Who's not coming tomorrow? Oh, you're Did you say that was a variation of a border of Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the gradual border of a nevus, right? This is the gentle border all the way around. You can see it fading out, okay? And this is the abrupt border of the melanoma component. And that's one of the reasons why chaos of border abruptness is a very good clue, especially when the melanoma arises in the nevus, because we know the nevus will have a gradual border. And the melanoma may have either or a mixture of both. Okay, so we've got this lesion here. That one there, okay. Is it one of these five benign things? Who thinks it's one of those five benign things? I do. It's a nevus. Look at it. Up here. It's symmetrical and it's got a gradual border all the way around. It's a nevus. I hope it is. I didn't cut it out. Okay. Is this one of those five benign things? Is it pigmented? Okay. Is it chaotic? Has it got clue to malignancy? Well, it's got a structured area here and a big area here without any structure predominating and that's eccentric, okay? And it's also got a polymorphous vessel pattern including dots, it's a melanoma in situ. Okay, here we have this lesion behind this lady here. Is it one of these five? See, to call it a nevus, it has to have the same border all the way around. Here it's got an abrupt border, here it's got a gradual border. This is how easy this is, okay? You now know your five different mother's faces. Well, your mother, <laughs> mother-in-law, grandmother on one side, grandmother on the other side, right? You, now, you know those five faces, and this is not one of them. That's, and you must put this through a, a system, okay? Also, you know you don't get flat nevi on the head and neck. They don't happen, right? Unless they're congenital. <laughs>
genital type and it hasn't got the morphology of a nevus. It hasn't got the morphology of Seb K because